Hi everyone, this is Philip Travis. And this week, what we have on the table for this week, the, the most significant item is your test. You have your second test this week. Uh, as was planned, the test is based on, on the three major sections that we've covered so far. The Revolutionary Age, the Industrial Revolution, and then this week, the Age of Imperialism during the 1800s. And again, I have a video lecture that should help you um, with this subject. It's really going to outline some of the big components of it. Remember, for the test, when it comes to um, your short identifi identification essays, the test is going to be just like the other tests in class. And you'll have multiple choice true-false section and about 20 to 25 questions. And then you'll have to choose two of the three big topics from this section of the course, a revolutionary age, the age of high imperialism, which we're talking about this week, and the Industrial Revolution. The 1800s age of imperialism, sometimes called the age of the high imperialism, because it's the most accelerated, fast-paced, global imperialism that the world had seen to that point. Remember, in answering those questions, the key thing is to be specific, identify specific aspects uh, that we covered in class, and be able to describe them and explain their significance. So on those questions, remember who, what, when, where, why is this significant, and use specific examples to make those, uh, to make those points. This test will be visible sometime around Tuesday late night, um, and then will be available to, to you to take through Sunday at the end of the week. The factoid for this week relates to imperialism, and this image you see behind me is kind of a, a real example of the propaganda of imperialism. This is an advertisement uh, from the age of imperialism, and it conveys the inherent racism that was involved in the process of European powers creating empires. Um, and of course, this is an advertisement for a soap, and the soap is using the language of of the, the, the so-called white man's burden. And the white man's burden was this idea, and it was created by individuals like Rudyard Kipling, but it was an idea that was used by imperialist powers to suggest that white Western civilization was the most advanced and that it was the white man's burden to bring civilization to the less advanced, less civilized native people of the world. And this was called the white man's burden. And in this advertisement, you can read the first step towards lightening the white man's burden is through teaching the virtues of cleanliness. Pear soap is a potent factor in brightening the dark corners of the earth. It's suggesting, it's using its soap to suggest that um, it's, it's part of this racist process of imperialism and bringing white civilization to people that were, you know, uh, believed to be uh, inferior um, in the developing world. Now, if you also look at this, it tells you some other things about imperialism, and I'll tell you the specific factoid in just a second, but if you see in the corners, down in the bottom corner, you have the European with the native person, again, that that supposition, that, that presumption, I should say, that indigenous people were somehow racially inferior. You see as well in the other corners the images of shipping, and particularly steam power and trade. Global imperialism in the 1800s was based on technology, like steam technology, military technology like the machine gun. We talked about those during uh, the Industrial Revolution. Other technologies like, um, like communication technology, the telegraph, the wireless telegraph ultimately, but the telegraph, the ability to lay telegraph lines so you could communicate uh, was also a huge factor in allowing European powers to colonize and imperialize the developing world, uh, particularly Africa, areas of Southeast Asia. Another factor in 
colonialism, and this is the factoid for this week, was a sort of miracle drug at the time known as quinine. And quinine is itself sort of like very much a a a a a a thing that causes you to remember or understand that concept of global interconnectivity. Because quinine comes from the bark of a tree in South America. Europeans first conquered and imperialized the Americas. And through that, myriads of products came across through the Colombian Exchange. Well, one of the products that was ultimately found and developed was quinine, this uh, element from a the bark of a tree in places like Ecuador, that what it did was it prevented malaria, or it didn't prevent malaria, it prevented a person who got bit by a malaria mosquito. Malaria, of course, causes a very, very high fever and can be fatal, and is very, very, very prevalent in tropical regions of the world, which were the parts of the world that many of these countries were imperializing. And quinine prevents the onset of the symptoms of malaria. Quinine was then used by world powers to give to their soldiers, and their soldiers would then uh, be effectively, they, they would have a barrier to the symptoms of malaria. And along with military technology, steam technology, uh, with, with ships and railroads, and of course communication technology, as I mentioned, quinine helped to fuel, helped to fuel the uh, increased imperialism of the 1800s and the increasingly rapid interconnections or interconnectivity of the world. To this day, if you go to your local grocery store, you can buy tonic water that has quinine in it, and it says it on the label. So you can see it right there in your, in your grocery store. The fact that for this week is quinine, the malaria drug that came from the bark of a tree in South America and basically made, from a medical standpoint, made European imperialism of the developing world possible. It is itself a sort of symbol of the process of global interconnectivity. Let's have a great week. Test this week. Be sure to study and prepare.